Hey there, it's Brittany. Welcome back. Can you believe it? I'm back with another video where I'm actually making jewelry instead of showing you beads. Um, so I want to stay motivated no matter how little the project is. So I thought I would just show you guys um, some stretch bracelets that I had in my mind. I know my last video was stretch bracelet or there was a stretch bracelet in the last video, but instead of just me showing you what I'm what I've made in a finished jewelry video update I'm just gonna show you what I'm making while I'm making it it's not a tutorial it's just kind of like a bead with me um, many of you have said you like that so uh, I did want to show you something that came in the mail yesterday um, it is a stretch cord um, container and the stretch cord so I got two of these two for ten dollars from Amazon Prime free shipping so um, I can't remember but there's like a couple hundred meters maybe this is 0.8 millimeter this is the best deal I've ever seen on this stuff usually it's ten dollars for one of these rolls and I've never seen this um, container that you know helps you organize your uh, stretch cord like my stretch cords a hot mess they always unravel um, even though I use the stretch cord needles you know the the spools unravel so I saw this on my friend Emma's channel and I'll link her channel below. She's just getting started making videos. Um, she is in Canada and I love her accent. I love it so much. So, and she's really calm and I just love listening to her. So I'll leave her a link to her um, channel below if you guys are interested. Um, but yeah, I saw these. I'll, link, I'll leave a link to these too because I just feel like everybody should have these. I haven't even used one yet. So um, even if I don't end up liking the stretch cord, which that would suck because they're, excuse my language, because there are hundreds of yards um, I still get the box which is pretty awesome and you can use this for anything that would fit through this hole so leather um, ribbon um, even beaded chain so I'm going to put that back the bobbin back in actually forget that I'm gonna put it through the guide hole first pull that out just a couple inches and then I'm gonna slip this back inside see how that goes don't want that to be in the way sorry I'm learning as I'm showing okay and I think we're good to go and then it'll just pull there we go a little learning curve there but it was not that hard okay so then this will always as long as I don't like jostle it this will always be sticking out the front I won't it's just gonna be so great for my organization and the, the fantastic part is they stack um, if you like using one millimeter I believe they had one millimeter and I even have 0.5 millimeter I don't like 0.5 millimeter it's so tiny and I don't really use tiny enough beads so 0.8 is always the best for me um, okay so I'm gonna put these to the side and um, so the beads I'm gonna use today, I mean these, even if I make more than one bracelet, it's gonna be super simple. Honestly, you're not, you're probably not gonna learn anything. <laughs> so um, I found these beads at Joann's a while back. They're so gorgeous. Um, definitely different kinds of metals on them. I've used this in another project. I think it was a necklace that I recently showed you guys. Um, and then I have some artisan beads that I made last year. So I'm going to spill those out on my trusty dusty, and I do mean dusty, um, bead board. It's disgusting. It's got glue, dirt, everything on it, but it's so helpful when I make stretch bracelets. I love this thing. I need another one because half the time my bead boards, and I will show you from one of my last videos, look like this because I don't like putting things away. So I'm gonna pull out the camera a little bit. I don't like putting things away. My apartment's a hot mess, so with all my beads. So this is from one of my other videos, that, or actually a couple of my other videos that you've seen. Um, and this tray will probably stay like this for like a week until I get fed up. But um, that's how I usually leave my trays, so I need to get more trays is what I'm saying. All right, so I'm gonna pull this out so we're not so close. And I will tell you the rest of this table looks exactly like that bead mat. <laughs> So when I tell you, I the, the good thing is for the most part I know when my apartment's organized, where everything is, even if it looks like a hot mess. Um, right now I did do a crazy cleanup a couple days ago that I did wasn't paying attention, um, but that's neither here nor there. So we'll cut this apart, and then here are my artisan beads. So I'm going to dump them all out. I'm not going to use all these. It's just everything in the same um, color family. I put in the same bag 
So there are some things that are not going to go together. This one I can't wait to use. I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it for a year. Um, it's a really pretty pendant and I want to make a necklace with it. I just haven't decided what I was going to do with it yet. And it's so gorgeous. So I just love it with the teal and the gold and the bronze and the green. Oh, it makes me so happy. So, um, I don't want to end up using all of these beads because I do want to have some to accent this. I mean, I can always make more, but I, once I make something, I'm kind of over it. Um, my attention span's not, not the best that way. But anyway, I made this pendant. Um, I think from the um, leftovers, like the scraps, I made these beads. They're just one-offs, and eventually I might put them in a bead soup. And you know, if they're not the focal, you would just they would just be an accent color and kind of get lost. They are definitely not um, my favorites, and they're not good. They're not good, but they're still nice colors. So, and then I have a couple other pendants in here. This one I was trying out sanding, and I th actually think that's really pretty. I just haven't ever done anything with it. And then this one's the same but different. This one's textured. I have to wash it off because there's some some clay dust in there but just a couple different ways that I can use the same color palette and make totally different things this is not a show and tell video it's just a bead with me video but I thought I'd tell you the story behind these of course they're not finished on the back I never do that um, so oh look at this guy this guy's kind of cool looking but I have two different sizes of beads actually looks like no, I have two different sizes of beads. So um, I actually, in my other video, showed you a huge size. So these were really big. These are a little bit smaller. I don't know what that is, the blue on my fingers or my hands. So these are a little bit smaller. And then we have this little tiny size. So looks like I was not paying attention to how big I was making beads this time. Um, but. I'm loving this color combo. It's so pretty. Um, and I ha so I have these accent beads to go with this. Um, I'm trying to think if I have crystals off the top of my head that I know that I want to go with them. I haven't been able to locate my bronze crystals, which are really what I want to put in this. Um, I was only really able to find these little ones and then a couple out of some Jesse James mixes. But I'm going to go grab some crystals and see what we can come up with. Okay, so I grabbed a few different things. Um, I've been obsessed with this bead since uh, my Jesse James Mystery Bead Box for May came, and it looks amazing with this color palette. So, I mean, it matches perfectly. So I'm gonna be using that on at least one of the bracelets. I found these crystals, um, Bargain Bead Box or Bead Box Bargains, one of either the subscription or I bought it from their website. Um, they go really well with the green and the blue. Um, I found, and I, I'm not sure I'm going to include these, these matte green gems, or I don't even know if they're gemstone, they're just stone beads. Um, I don't know the stone, got them in Tucson. And then I have some matte um, tiger eye, which look really cool with the browns. So, and then I have a bag of bone beads that I'm going to kind of siphon through or uh, sort through. And then I have, um, possibly if I wanted to do a focal with one of these wood beads, and then I have some regular wood beads. So, um, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see what we come up with, right? So I'm going to move these off of, I know at least one of the, I think I'm going to make two or three bracelets, um, so I can have a stack. I don't have anything that, that goes with this right now because I haven't made anything with these beads, but eventually I'll be making something with these, uh, pendants. Not that I need to have something that specifically goes with them, but it helps. So the first bracelet, I'm actually kind of excited about this big bone bead. I've had these forever. I got them from Fire Mountain Gems, and if they still have them, there's the information. They're 30 by 16 millimeter. I'm sure they were like a dollar or two. And it doesn't, uh, it says six. So I like that one. It's gonna be a big, that's a big bead. I mean, it's big. But we'll put that in the middle. I want to save four of these beads for the power shell bracelet. So I'll put those in the middle there. But then we have enough room. And I think because this bead is so big and it's not showing up as big on the camera, but since this bead is so big, I'm going to be using the chunkier beads with it. 
think four is more than enough for that. Um, do I want to do it? See, this wood is not the same color, so I'm not going to go with those. Um, and I want to use, I'm going to be using these throughout all of the bracelets. And I have more of these somewhere. But as you've seen, um, organization has taken a backseat in my life. <laughs> so I will be cutting this apart and kind of laying it out right here. I don't know why I have these huge kitchen scissors over here, but it is what it is. Um, okay, so we have our spacer beads laid out. Um, and then I am pretty sure I'm going to be using some of these. Man, I only have a handful of them. Not even a handful, just a few. Um, I want to definitely use some of these crystal spacers, but I want to save some to have throughout the rest of my jewelry. I want to use these silver spacers. I want this to definitely have different um, different colors. And I have my colors of metal, I should say. I have my spacer bead box next to me in case I want to supplement. Ooh, seeing a couple one-off beads here in antique brass. Trying to see if I have any that match each other. I don't. This is what I'm looking through right now. But I, I want this bracelet to be symmetrical. So, oh, yes. Woohoo! I got two beads. Okay. And then we. Are there any copper that aren't this bead? No, and I don't have any other bigger copper beads that I can remember at the moment. I'm trying to stick with the um, with the feel, like the dull, the matte feel, because these aren't these aren't shiny like these beads. Like I don't want something that bright. All right, so we'll just stick with what we have out here. Um, I did find these littler beads. I think these are from Bargain Bead Box. Usually when there's a five on, or you know, a number on the bag, that's where they're from, but I also recycle baggies, so that doesn't help me all the time. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's start laying this out. to understand what how I want this to be laid out so I think we're gonna go spacer in between I wish I had like really Mondo um, tiger eye beads like huge ones I seem some I'm looking here seeing some antique brass beads on my table. I haven't used these in, I mean, honestly, probably seven or eight years, if not longer. These little filigree beads, but they might fit in our project today. And I'm trying to decide, are there is one copper and one antique brass? No, they're exactly the same. They, one just looks a little brighter than the other. Okay, sorry. I, I warned you coming into this. <laughs> Let's just put this here. And let's just put this here. So. Some bead caps. I 
think it will be cap bucket here. I'm not really seeing a ton of good options for the bigger beads. I think I used all my big bead caps in my last video that are in these color palettes. Yep, we used them up. That's okay, that's okay. So let me grab my needle here. And just so you know, those these things, these came with um, beading needles too, but I'm not gonna use those today. Um, so I'm gonna grab my needle and I'm gonna start by, what do I want in the back? Let's try and put the copper bead in the back and then Sorry, not in frame here. So let's put silver. No. I might run out of these spacers. It's really pretty. If I run out of the spacers, oh well. I will figure out something else for the other bracelets. They really provide a really good buffer between those beads. Ugh, that's gorgeous. Hopefully I don't run out of them. <laughs> Well, I'm loving this so far. Okay. And then once you kind of pre-plan, it goes it goes pretty quickly from there. I still have some spacers left, which is awesome. Oh, and this bead doesn't want to fit. There we go. And then I just need one more spacer. This was a great strand of beads. Okay, so here's our bracelet so far. I do need to measure this. Because the beads are so chunky, and I explained this in my other video, it needs, it possibly needs some extra length because, yeah, it's only seven inches. It's only seven inches, and it's so chunky, it's really going to be like six inches or six and a half inches once it gets on your, your wrist, and my wrist is a little fluffier than that. So, um, now I have to decide where I'm going to put like an extra inch of beads or an extra three quarters inches of beads. I'm sorry, I'm looking at uh, the bracelet on my lap here. Um, so we have this copper one over here. I really like the overall bracelet right now. I don't want to change too much, so we're going to the problem is if I add another set, which would probably work, the, the bracelet's gonna be thrown off and then I would have to take out this copper bead because then, because right now we only have, we have two, um, two sets, two perfect sets. And then we have the copper in the middle and then this wooden one in the middle. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, Where are my little ones? Do I have two little ones? So what I'm thinking is I could do 
the, the smaller beads that match. And then it would be this copper on this side. Let me measure this real quickly. Hmm, that would still be almost too much. Okay, so sorry, that took way too long to figure out and I, it would have been horrible for you guys. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna keep it this way. However, I'm going to add another copper and another um, tiger eye. So keeping with my pattern, I'm gonna put the copper, then a spacer, a tiger eye, and a spacer. So it really truly makes the, sp the, the handmade beads and the wood bead the focal. So sorry, you can't really see that. It's just, it comes in about seven, three quarters inches because these beads are so chunky and it, it's giving me enough give, um, since, especially since this one's straight like that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show you, I'll grab my brand new, um, that'll be back, my brand new, stretch cord I showed you guys in this this in the other video um, I take the stretch cord and hook it on the needle tip oops and I pinch mine closed uh, after I get them because beetle and um, needles are typically too open and most of the time the uh, stretch cord doesn't stay in them so let me scoot that down my cord so much easier than trying to put that on myself okay and I always like I said in my other video always cut off the por portion that was in the needle because the structure it's not structurally sound anymore so I'll snip that off I love this because it's an automatic bead stopper down there oh thank you Emma for pointing these out okay so I cut about, hmm, I cut enough for two tails. And then I pre-stretch after I snip. I mean, you could do it beforehand, but it's easier for me to go like this and just pull. So I pull, I pre-stretch because stretch cord, like its name, is stretchy. And if you don't pre-stretch it, it will stretch out too much while you're wearing it. And then you'll have to restring your bracelet and it's a whole thing and you don't want that. So, um, sorry, I'm stretching outside of the camera because it's hard to do the camera in the way so then I go ahead and I do my knot so I do once and do twice and I do three times usually I'll do it at a place in the bracelet where I know the knot will fit inside a bead and it'll fit inside this copper one the only glue I use on my um, bracelets is GS hypo cement hypo cement um, I've used others don't like them this one doesn't dry instantly but it also if you get it on yourself it's not like super glue and your fingers aren't terrible for the rest of the day so I just put a little dab on the knot on both sides I'll set that aside let it dry for five minutes and then I snip and put the um, not inside of the bead all right first bracelet done and omg this is one of my favorites that i've done in a while like i say that pretty much about everything that i make for myself but this one's really pretty i'm gonna try it on oh it's perfect fit perfect fit and it's um it was like i said about seven and three quarters but it, it comes down to about seven and a quarter because of um, the chunkiness of these beads i would have loved to include one of the smaller ones back here but it made the bracelet too long that's why I didn't go that route I really was going to the bead was just a little too big and I do mean a little 
too much, uh, you know, it was, it was another quarter inch bigger. So I, I just didn't do it. And nobody's gonna be looking at the bottom of my bracelet. They're gonna be focused on this really pretty wood bead and these pretty other pretty artisan beads. So bracelet one down, we'll be back for the second one. Okay, I've brought back my trusty dusty bead mat or bead um, board. And we're gonna work on our second bracelet. Um, let's see, what do we want to do here? Well, I want to work with this power shell or abalone shell bead. And I really like how it looks. Oh, I'm not, you guys can't see the bottom of my bead mat here. Um, I really like how it looks with these artisan beads. Maybe not this one specifically. Um, We've got a couple of these here. So I want filler beads in between though because um, this is definitely the focal and these are taking away from them or from it I should say. Um, and I think we're going to get silver in here. Um, not a hundred percent sold on that. We'll see. I'm thinking I like these beads. Sorry, I'm gonna move this up a little bit because I'm bas you're basically seeing like the wrong part of the bead <laughs> board. There we go. Uh, I like these. Do I like these together? Yeah, I like the green. Um, oh, I bought beads last night. We shouldn't have. And I'm gonna put the the. Um, the haul up, but I shouldn't have bought these beads, but I, I, I needed something from the store and then I, of course, Michael's had a 70% off sale and I haven't been in Michael's in three months. So I kind of went a little wild. So I got these bronze crystals because I told you I can't find, I think all my bronze crystals must be in my, ooh, must be in my uh, storage unit because they're not in my apartment, that's for sure. Um, Okay, okay, these are looking really pretty. I like this crystal better with this bead, so I'm not gonna use these right now. Um, interesting, let's see. Okay, so I'm definitely gonna use these as an accent too. If I use, I don't like, I don't like the dullness, the matteness of these beads next to this really pretty abalone beads so well so pretty um just trying to decide I, I definitely want maybe these wood beads let's see let's see if the wood beads look good yep I like those they're a little dark but I like them And it's going to tie in really well to the last bracelet I just made. Even though the wood is a different color, it's not going to matter because um, next next to these uh, tiger eye beads, it's going to look great. So, and I may not end up wearing them together. I know I never know where I'm, what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, so, all right, I have to decide how these crystals are going to fit in here. I think I'm thinking I'm going to use these as spacer beads, but I do need to get some shine in there. So hmm. Interesting. I only have a little like six of these left maybe five and the, the focal I would put them normally around the focal but the focal's flat so it's not gonna really that's not gonna work for me oh yeah I do have six and so we're not gonna use I don't think I'm gonna use them in this situation 
Um, I'm thinking I'm going to use these. Hmm, I'm really, instead of these, I'm really loving these beads. I forgot I had these crystals out. And they really go really well. I'm trying to decide which one goes, looks better with the abalone bead. So that actually has like every single color in the abalone bead. But these are really pretty too. Hmm. interesting okay so I laid out these crystals I'm liking how they look better than the copper ones um, I think I'm gonna keep these out of this bracelet because I found these crystals in my stash it was a bracelet that I purchased at like a dollar jewelry store um, and I was never gonna wear the bracelet like this but I these spacers can be like super expensive so um, I thought I had I, I know I bought two bracelets and I thought I had one that was already broken apart and I'm looking for those as we speak in my um, spacer bead box but I think they're not in here so it's okay I'll just cut this apart and um, put them in here and um, so I'm gonna save these and then I think at the back of this bracelet I'm going to use one of these beads to mirror the last bracelet so let's get started with that pattern we're gonna go spacer wood bead spacer artisan bead and then I'm not going to put a spacer between these two because that's just uh, this is already blingy I'm trying to decide I don't think I need a spacer between that but I will put another one yeah I think that's good enough that way I save on spacers I just love these beads. They make me so happy. <laughs> and then we have our beautiful shell bead. Please let this fit. It's not going to fit. Oh my goodness. It's got a teeny tiny hole. Why didn't I notice that before? So okay, I'm going to slide that down. So we have an issue. I need to see if it even fits through. We might, oh no, I don't know what to do here. Um, I don't know if the point eight mil okay so good oh good 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 so the point eight millimeter fits that's totally fine um what i'm gonna do is it's just easier if i restring on the 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 uh i'm sorry the needle than restringing on the string itself because it just takes so much longer so what i'm gonna do is start from the other end so this will be the last bead that I put on because that way then I can just string it so we will start with a spacer and we're just going to go quickly the other end it just takes so much longer for me to put stretch cord through a bead than a metal object Now, the other thing that might become an issue is the length of the bracelet. So before I start stringing the rest of the bracelet, and I'm at the halfway point right now, I need to see how long this is and double it and then add in the length of that bead. So give me one second, find my trusty dusty ruler. And it is... Okay, so it's three and a half inches, so it'll be seven and a half, or I mean seven inches plus this. And this bracelet isn't too chunky, so it'll be about seven, it's gonna be perfect. We're good. Okay, so we will put this bead on and then we're gonna go from, nope, from this end. Mm. 
Hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out the pattern again. So, okay. Just needed a, a hot second there to figure that one out been a very long day and this is actually the second day so today's Thursday the beginning of this video was on made on a, the first bracelet was made on a Wednesday also um what do you guys think have, has anybody ever done a a hundred day challenge for whatever their craft is um let me know because I'm thinking about doing a hundred day challenge just to keep myself motivated um and keep creating so I would do a bracelet a day not that I would do a hundred videos but usually with a hundred day challenge you choose one thing um, if you're a card maker make a hundred cards in a hundred days um, I'm following several polymer clay artists one is creating a pair of earrings every day um, one is doing a new um, veneer every day one does something else and I was thinking you know I love bracelets let's try and do a bracelet a day for 100 days um, let me know if anybody's first of all interested in joining a challenge like that with me and or if you've ever done a challenge like that all right sorry talking and looking at the pattern are not my I can't do them it's like walking and chewing gum Okay, so here's our pattern. I'm just double checking to make sure everything is right. So crystal wood, crystal artisan, crystal wood, crystal artisan, crystal wood, crystal copper. Yep, we're good. So I'm gonna put this on my stretch cord. down thread it on to the stretch cord also gonna grab my uh, abalone bead stick it on the stretch cord and um, I'm gonna cut off that bad part because I don't want it to get stuck in my bracelet by accident Gosh, I just love this little container guy. I don't know what I've been doing my entire life without him. Okay, so then I'll cut on, cut off a piece, and I'm going to do what I did with the first bracelet. I'm going to pre-stretch. Really, guys, I, I cannot stress enough that that does wonders for your bracelet longevity. Okay, and then we're going to not... So once, okay, twice, and three times. I need to cut my nails. Okay, they're just a little too long for me. And, oh, I shouldn't have stretched it before I glued it because that's what happens. Thankfully, Everything didn't go flying, so let's try that one more time. I love it when I show mistakes to you guys because honestly, they happen. I don't want you to think that just because I have a YouTube channel and I make jewelry, that mistakes don't happen. And I try not to edit those out. My rambling, on the other hand, I will definitely edit out if I can. Okay, so I'm pulling that tight. And then I will go ahead and glue the knot. with my hypo cement oh we have a leak okay so I'll go ahead and glue the knot now obviously since the knot was so big that or I mean the the hole on the shell bead was so small that I couldn't even get my needle through it I will not be hiding the knot in that one it will be going in not even the crystal next to it it will be I'll be sliding it into the wood bead so I'll clean up any extra glue that ends up being on it and then I'll let that dry for five minutes. Sorry, it is hard to see. There we go. And all right, so we have two 
very beautiful coordinating. Oh my gosh, these are so pretty together. So I could wear them separately, but I'm not going to. I mean, they, they made them. So the cool thing is like, even if I didn't have these focals, oh, yep, that's what we're gonna do on the next bracelet. We're gonna use, do I have more of the copper? I might have to go looking because I know I had another strand of these and I didn't use the copper ones, but oh no, I only have one more copper left. Um, I'm gonna go looking for these beads throughout my stash to see if I can find another one. If not, I'm just gonna make this the focal of the next bead, next bracelet and uh, we'll go from there. I'm not gonna, let's see, I have, how many of these do I have? Three? Uh, too bad I can't make like an, <laughs> an even amount of um, beads. So I had one, two, three, four. I only made seven of those beads, really. <laughs> oh, the life of somebody who gets bored and then gives up. <laughs> All right, so, um, I will be figuring that out in just a few minutes and I'll be back after I look through my stash to see if I have more of these. Okay, yay, I was able to find some more copper beads and just a couple more spacers. This base, this bracelet, since the first two were so, um, they had focals, uh, really flashy focals, I would say. <clears throat> I'm gonna make this one super basic. So if I don't decide to wear both of these together, at least I can wear them with um, one of, or this next bracelet. So. I actually found these and they really go really well with um, these beads. Uh, so we'll see if we can mix them in. Uh, I think I'm gonna get these in this time. And I'm sorry if you hear a dog barking, it's not my dog. <laughs> um, it's a neighbor's dog. So, um, but like I said, I want it to be more basic, not really have a, uh, uh, a focal. I, I only have three of these left. I'm not gonna use, maybe I'll make two more bracelets. I don't know. Um, not going to use the big ones, I don't think, on this one. So, let's see. Just looking at these beads next. I really like these little beads. I didn't see these until like five seconds before I decided to start making this bracelet. These were from a bra uh, bead box. I don't know what they are. I think they're turquoise. Yeah, these are really pretty. I think we're gonna use these somehow, some way. Okay, so we have three of these beads that I want really wanna use. I have five of these beads. All right, so we'll space out the artisan beads. Okay, I'll cut this strand. And we'll kind of just fill in the blanks. Hopefully these fit, yeah, these will fit on my needle, my stretch bracelet needle. So we'll just grab that. Um, I'm gonna try out a couple different things on the stretch bracelet needle. So I, I wanna see how many of these I have. Looks like one, two, three, four, five. Well, no, <laughs> wow, I can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we have eight of those. It'll be enough to put um, one on either side, at least, of these guys. And then I'll just have two for another project. So let's, then I'll just kind of fill in with these guys. Oh, I wish I would had one more of these beads. So maybe, oh, that wouldn't help. I was gonna thinking. I was thinking of doing one of these as a focal, but that's not gonna help me. I'm just checking to make sure I don't have another one, but I, I know I don't. <laughs> I do have a couple of these, which are the same color, colors, I should say. Um, so, what if I did? that there hmm I thought I had oh yep and I did this here and then well do I like this one yeah I do like that one and then I did one more on the sides this will be the middle bead in the back okay one, two, 
to. And then I'll just put a couple of these on either side. I'm so sorry if you guys hear that dog. If not, great, on either side. I don't care that they're not 100% matchy-matchy. Okay, so I'm just trying to decide how many beads I'm gonna put of like that between here. So let's start, I'll start with one of these. Put on my spacer. They're definitely not big enough for me to only put one, so I'm going to try two. We'll see how long the, the bracelet gets that way, and if it gets too long, then I will take them out. <laughs> I'm not really, so I really love these beads, but I'm not loving them with these spacers. Let's see if smaller spacers will work. So, all right, let's take these off. Maybe these beads aren't gonna work out today. I'll have to use them in a different way. Uh, where did those, these green beads go? So let's try these eight millimeter beads. So uh, we'll start, so I'm starting in the middle going like this, I think with these 8 millimeter beads there'll be too many of them, or at least they'll make the bracelet too long, so we'll see how it goes. I do like them though. really tiny hole and it well it'll be okay okay so then this guy so I'm gonna check to see how long this is because I don't want to get the entire bracelet on and then it's too long this is clocking in at about three inches so I think we should be okay This guy. Oh, for Pete's sake. Okay, there we go. Then this guy. Oh, I didn't put this to gemstone or stone bead. Okay, so here's our pattern so far. Again, this is the middle bead. So I'm gonna um, measure this again and see where we're at. We're at uh, about three and three quarters inches. And then I have probably this, mm, so this might be a little, a little long. So what I'm gonna do is in the back, I'm not gonna do another bead like that. I'm gonna shorten it by including, going right from the spacer to um, the copper bead and then into a spacer and then another polymer clay, lead, clay bead.
Oh, this one I can't tell where the hole is because of the black marks on it. Ah, there we go. It's hard to find. Especially since my light's leaving. It's 5, oh, it's 6.20. Uh, it's getting a little late. And I usually don't film this late because the light isn't the best. But I wanted to get this done because I'm already on the second day of the video. <laughs> Oh, I think I messed up there. Did I mess that up? Yeah, I did. There we go. Hoping this works out right. Otherwise, you'll see some frustration, or I'll edit it out. <laughs> All right, so here, this looks, well, no, I guess it's not that long. Okay, so let me, I don't really trust the the ruler on that for some reason. Okay, we're only at, well, we're at about seven and a half inches, which I think is perfect, because this is just a, it's not very thick like the other two. Okay. So there we go. Um, I'm going to take my, oh, this is the wrong one. Grab, oops, grab this guy. This thing is like the best thing ever. It's like the sliced bread of jewelry making. <laughs> all right. Anything that makes my life easier, I'm all for it. Okay. So there we go. We've threaded it on and I'm just going to ease my beads onto the wire, or the wire, the stretch cord and you guys see what a mess this board is now and I'm gonna do everything in my power to make myself clean it up but it won't happen all right so I'm gonna cut off the this part because again it's not structurally sound anymore and I always do that before I start tying anything on my bracelet because I don't want it to accidentally make it in the bracelet all right snipping that part I'm going to pre-stretch like I've done with all the bracelets. Always pre-stretch. Okay. Don't pull too hard though because it will snap and that's we don't want that. So, okay, my, my hole is big enough for me to hide um, a knot in there. So I'm okay with the knot going between these two beads. So over, do one. two and three okay now I'm gonna grab my GS hypo cement I know I'm doing the exact same thing three different times but you guys said you like these videos so I am happy to do them if you guys like I'm sorry I got some glue on my fingers and find the knot and we will draw put a drop on both sides and then let's, I always close this glue up right away because first of all, it leaks. Second of all, it dries quickly enough to where you would want to worry about it clogging. Okay. So normally I wait, I'm just going to, I usually wait about five minutes, but I'm going to just tighten that a little bit more and then I'm going to snip. And I'm going to slide the knot inside this bead carefully don't pull too hard okay I think I got some glue on my bead right here all right so there's our third bracelet oh my gosh it's so pretty sorry the lights leaving me all right so I'm gonna move our beadboard and let's show all three bracelets together oh they make me so happy oh my gosh and they th so there's a common theme of our uh, artisan beads and spacers but on each bead or each bracelet I used completely different um, either stone or wood beads so we have our um, accenting tiger eye accenting wood beads and crystals oops I dropped the third one and then our accenting stone beads in this beautiful green teal weird color that I've never seen before so um, yeah each bracelet can definitely stand on its own but they look fantastic together too. 
Um, let me know what you guys think. I really appreciate your comments and I love talking to you guys. Um, if you know anybody who would, who would like this uh, video, please share and I will talk to you soon. Here we have some glue. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.